unboxing a Carrera Go uh, 71598 lap timer. Um, this is the new unit from Carrera uh, which um, has not actually arrived in the UK yet. Um, so I ordered this um, from the Carrera website, from the main Carrera uh, website and it arrived within I think five or six days um, from Germany so that's pretty good. I um, paid for it with my own money, it's, uh, it's not any sort of um, gift from Carrera, I bought it as a, as a customer uh, of Carrera products. Um, so here we are, arrived um, this morning and um, I've opened the box as you can see but not um, opened the contents. Um, so, um, fairly basic packaging, um, a note from Carrera saying, oh right, so there's a signature of the person who packed the, the box, that's nice isn't it? Um, shipping details and the cost, um, no wrapping, and here we are, the unit, um, it's quite stylish, quite attracted to it, uh, and the features seem to be quite useful, um, better than the, um, the older version of this, the Carrera Bridge, which looks really antiquated, um, and um, Annoyingly, has a timeout of three minutes. Um, I believe the timeout on this is longer, uh, and um, we'll get into that later. So, um, here we are. The instructions on the end. The, the description of the unit uh, or the box. Um, Carrera Go, and um, try and get into it. Oh. Probably ruined by pain, but never mind. Uh, instructions in several languages um, British, GB, uh, Stroke USA, uh, Italian, uh, Sp Spanish, German, French, Czechoslovakian, um, I think that's maybe it. Okay. and uh, the unit. Stylish unit, as I mentioned. Oh no, it's the table <laughs> the tie wrapped on. I'll have to go and get somebody to cut the tie wraps with. Just give me a second. Uh, so. Tie wrapped on is quite nice, um, but could be a bit of an issue on Christmas morning or whatever. It comes with a spare um, half street also. That's quite good. So, uh, here we are. And, um, oh, I need a screwdriver to put batteries in, don't I? Uh, right. <laughs> uh, screwdriver will magically appear. Uh, and we're back uh, with the screwdriver. Um, so much for trying to do that the unboxing in one shot uh, but um, here we are um, I was going to show you how to get the battery hatch open and do that now there's a screw hole uh, in here for a screw and if I undo that um, somewhere in here undo that and the battery compartment is in here um, hopefully you can see this, not too sure if you can, but um, battery is inside and it pulls out, comes out and it takes three AA size batteries. That's the standard um, AA size type battery, three of those. Um, I'm not going to use the batteries, I'm going to use the alternative power um, source, which is to use a USB cable. Um, so I'll show you that in a second. Um, so on the um, base here, uh, hopefully you can see this, just here there is a, a small USB socket, the kind that you find on uh, many telephones. The old, there is a newer style um, called Type C, but this is Type B, uh, B for Bravo, and um, most, um, well, telephone, some telephone um, 
charging leads uh, will fit in there. Uh, it's purely a power connection, there's no data, so you cannot download or connect this unit to a computer or to a portable device of any sort. Um, this is purely standalone. Uh, the, um, uh, the connectivity is just not there. Um, portable devices like app connections or through Bluetooth, um, just there's no facility for that. So um, here we are. Uh, the my power bank for using um, the unit, powering the unit, is here, and um, it's got this, as I mentioned, the small USB micro type connector. Um, plug that in. Got it right around. Uh, and um, it's off at the moment. I have to switch on the power from the power bank, um, and I'll do that now. The unit powers up. Um, the screen lights and the Carrera uh, logo lights up. Um, the clock started running. I kind of mentioned this earlier that the clock immediately starts to run, and uh, you can drive you can drive drive cars immediately, and it'll start recording the times and the number of laps um, the cars completed. Uh, the sensors are in the guide slot in the track. So there's one in here and one in here. And um, I've got a little bar here, which I shall use to, to um, mimic the car passing by. If I do that, you get a beep to tell you that the car's triggered the sensor. Same for the other lane. And then the, um, that's the car effectively leaving the start line. Um, so it's registered that the car's crossed the start line, saying lap zero. When the car comes back again and completes the first lap, the count goes to one to indicate the number of laps completed, um, and that that display line there equates to the the track lane nearest the unit. Oh, I just triggered it again, so that's two gone. Uh, if I trigger the other lane, the other the lane here, furthest away from the unit, it will register on the bottom line of the display, which to my mind is a bit um, back to front, but. That's the way it is. Uh, the sounds that it makes the beep um, varies in tone. If you cha if you def if you um, beat your fastest lap time, um, you get a lower tone sound than just if you're triggering the um, the completion of a lap. So um, this should be just a, nor a normal lap, should we say? The high pitched tone, and then when I trigger it quickly. Like you did there, um, you get the lower t tone to indicate you've improved your best time. Um, I'll just do that on the other lane. Um, so it's uh, for a normal lap. I'll go back in again. And this time it will be a fast lap, which is the lower tone. So that's quite good. It indicates um, as you're running around, you get instant feedback as to whether you've improved your time or not. Um, sadly both lanes make the same noise so if you actually do have two cars circulating uh, you need to be, be aware of which car crossed the line at that particular time. Um, so that's the unit um, quite nice. Uh, you can end the session by pressing the button at the right hand side here. At that point the screen display flashes and the Carrera logo flashes um, I think that's telling you that it's kind of paused the um, the timing. Um, if I press again, it will stop flashing, and, that, and it stops the timing at that point as well. So that's ended the session, as it were. Um, on the display, if I press the left-hand button, uh, it tells me which which lane is in which position. If it was a race, uh, so the lane. That row, which is the one nearest the unit, um, is in second position, and the one furthest away, the lane furthest away, is in first position, as if it was a race. In actual fact, it was just a practice session, so not really a race. Um, there are there are three modes the unit works in. That set, that mode we've just been operating in, which Carrera referred to as training mode, um, I would refer to it as practice, uh, and um, 
that is the default mode when you switch on it instantly goes into that so you can instantly start clocking times uh, with the car going round um, the other mode is um, well one of the other two modes is the um, race which is which is limited by the number of laps um, they call that a lap race and then the other type is uh, a race limited by time and they call that a time race uh, in the other video I'm going to do more in depth um, I'll show you how you set these up but you set them up using the buttons on here um, unfortunately the, the instructions do refer to this button as button, button 1 and then later on they mention this one being as button 1 so mm, it's not so great in the instructions uh, in that respect um, but if you think about this button A, B and C then you can work to that sort of regime um, there are start light LEDs <laughs> and um, these count down when you start a race um, they're on both sides so um, you can see them from both sides if we've got one racer at this side and another racer at the other side then um, they'll both see the countdown uh, it does a, it records jump start so if somebody jumps the start and crosses the sensor before the race has actually started um, you get an indication of some sort I'm not sure exactly what um, the instructions say that the start line sorry the unit should be after the start line um, so it would go in, in there effectively um, kind of awkward with the power connector there but um, that's what they suggest and the reason for that is as I, as I showed earlier at the start of the race the um, car has to trigger the timer once to start the lap counting and that's when it indicated zero laps completed um, so that's why you have to have the start line before the timing unit and that seems to work quite well um, other things to tell you about um, I think that's about it um, the dual power supply is use, useful um, you could run it from a, per, a, a phone charger if the charger has enough capacity I think it's 500 milliamp capacity it needs which is quite high uh, so maybe not all phone chargers will be able to produce that current um, it's quite nice unit seems to be fairly robust fairly solid in the Carrera way of course um, so it should stand a bit of abuse as they tend to suffer um, the sensors are embedded in the, in the slots in the grooves and they're on a single circuit board under here so using this with any other kind of track system uh, might be challenging if you don't know much about electronics and soldering and things like that um, but um, for career use it'll be well I think it'll be very useful um, it's more convenient on than the bridge type, the pre predecessor Carrera bridge, which relies on having you know access for the, the unit to stand on both sides of the track, whereas this only stands at one side, which is, is perhaps more useful um, if you have limited space. Um, what else can I tell you? I think you can switch it off by holding the um, the button in for a few seconds. It powers down that way. Oh, the timeout. The automatic timeout is 10 minutes or thereabouts, um, which is a much more convenient time than the bridge unit, which times out after 3 minutes. 3 minutes can be spent just putting your car back on the track, fixing the brushes or whatever when you put the car back on the track. Um, can take 3 minutes and then you lose the race settings. Um, I believe that this unit actually saves the race settings. Um, it will do this time because the power is still on from the power bank. Um, so I guess we'll press that, we'll go back to where we were. Well, it didn't go exactly back to where where we were. But I think if I had set up a race and said, like, it's a 10 lap race, that kind of setting would be retained um, when the power was off. Um, but we'll find that out in the other video. So, um, introductory video. Hope that's been useful. Um, sorry I didn't get the, um, the, the battery <laughs> situation and the tire situation. Pre predicted, I didn't, I didn't realise that was going to happen um, but um, uh, that's the the risk of doing things live as they were ok, um, thank you for watching Video Torini and um, see you next time